We're going to have a quick look at the pattern of Megan's Rockabilly blouse. For the sleeve you'll have at the lower end of the sleeve the cuff. It's an integrated cuff which is just going to be turned up and turned up again on the inside as well so you've got a really clean finish. You also need to make sure that when you're cutting out that you're marking the sleeve head and the front of the sleeve. Now we're going to have a quick look at the back which is cut on the fold and has a yoke at the top. There's going to be a box pleat which gives ample room for movement. On the front it's very similar only the box pleat lies in the middle and it's not cut on the fold and again there is a yoke. The collar is a two-part collar and I've given it this nice Peter Pan shape. Then you've got the front placket. The placket is where you're going to put your buttonholes on one side and the buttons on the other side and it's simply going to be attached to the front like this. Then I've given you a pattern piece for all of your ruffling. You can leave the ruffles off if it's too complicated, but to make it a lot easier, what I have done is used a prepared bias binding strip, which I just iron flat first and then lengthways in half. I have used some pretty ribbon to make it stand out and my buttons are alternating, which is a really nice idea. First of all, we're going to have to cut the whole lot out. The top collar has got three parts. You've got the interfacing and the top collar twice. The collar stand, again, is cut twice and a bit of violin once. Then you've got the placket. Again, you need to cut the placket twice and the violin twice. The front yoke has got four parts altogether. The yoke is going to be completely interfaced. And I'm using a different fabric because I had run out of fabric, but you can use exactly the same. And the back has got two parts again, so we can completely face it. Then we've got our back. This is the lower back. It's cut on the fold. And again, you should have snipped at the top where the center is and the side so that you can put your box pleat in. The same applies to the front. You need to mark where you're going to put your box pleat. It comes in two pieces. Remember, it's not cut on the fold. And here they are. On the sleeve, make sure you mark the front and the sleeve head. And you should have a pair. That is so important. Now we're going to put in our pleats. For a box pleat, you need to move the outer snips to the center. Pin them and do the same on both fronts and they're ready to be sewn onto the yoke. For the back, you do exactly the same. Move the pleats towards the center, pin them on both sides and we are now ready to sew. To continue watching my free online lesson, please visit the sewing school at frogsandfrolics.com. Thank you for watching and see you there.